Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to week six of our uh, distance learning. Uh, so for this week, we're going to uh, continue with probability. But this time, we're actually going to um, study the probability of counting more complex counting scenarios. Right, but before we actually go to the lesson, let us go over the uh, PGCPS online guidelines. All right, so please be reminded that the PGCPS administrative procedures regarding appropriate use of technology, social media, and email continue to apply to our online instruction. In addition, this session may not be recorded without the instructor's consent. So, uh, as we keep uh, mentioning before, this, uh, this statement has to be um, understood as the recording could not be um, shared without my consent. So if you think your uh, friends or certain family members would benefit from actually watching this video lesson, do let me know so I can give them written permission and we will not have any, any problem later on. Um, a description of the applicable procedures is provided online in the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook. Thank you for your cooperation. So if you would like to read more on the online protocols, you may, of course, um, go, to the, uh, go through the PG portal and then look for the student handbook. Or if you don't want to navigate the PG portal, you can, of course, uh, go to uh, our Google Classroom scroll all the way down because uh, one of the earliest entries I posted is actually an access to the Google, I mean to the uh, student handbook, right? So now that this is um, out of the way, we are now ready for our lesson for the week. Okay, all right, so here we are. Probability and complex counting. So as I mentioned earlier, so this is a combination of probability and counting complex scenarios. So objectives. So pretty much um, the objectives are for us to be uh, using complex counting techniques, which involve uh, permutation, uh, combinations, factorials, and anything which, ha which is um, under the fundamental principle of counting. Right? Our second objective is to apply the definition of probability to solve word problems. So this particular um, lesson, we will actually go over several examples, right, which are a bit more complicated than usual. And then we will see how to apply probability with those particular complex counting problems. Okay, so before we actually go there, uh, please take note of this review. So probability, the ratio of the number of desired outcomes to the total number of possible outcomes. So if you want to figure out the probability of a particular event occurring, you need to determine the number of ways that event can occur, if it is possible to occur. Then you divide that, but the total number of ways that any event can occur. Okay, so take note, uh, probability is always um, going to be a fraction or a decimal or a percent. So as a fraction, it should have a value which is between zero and one. As a percentage, it should have a value which is between zero and 100%. Right, so it can't be just a whole number or it can be a decimal which is higher than one or a negative number, all right? So this is just the concept of probability. Next, we're going to do a quick review on permutations and combinations. So uh, permutations, the number of ways our objects can be selected from n objects in an arranged manner. It can be computed through this, part, uh, this particular formula. Combinations, Right? On the other hand, follows a very similar formula, except that it has no regard to any arrangement. So if uh, what matters is only picking the objects, then you only need to use combinations. But if there is a particular importance 
on how the numbers or how the objects get picked, then therefore we have to use permutations. So take note, this makes use of the factorial symbol. All right, so make sure that you are actually familiar with how factorials work because we are, of course, going to use them again in this particular lesson. All right, so the first example we have is given the word Alabama. Determine the probability of rearranging its letters such that all the A's are next to each other. Right? So we're supposed to determine the probability that when you rearrange all the letters here, the A's will be next to each other. Okay, so as um, what, we've, uh, what we keep mentioning, people, um, if you would like to try this out on your own, you may, of course, pause the video, work it out on your own. And then once you're ready, you may unpause the video and then you can look over uh, and see whether the answer is correct. Or if not, view how the solution actually went through. All right. I think that's enough time for you to have pause the video. Then try it out, make a decent attempt. And then unpause it to actually see the solution. All right, so we're going to go to our whiteboard. Ha, there we go. So the objective is to arrange the letters in the word Alabama so that all the A's are together. Now, in probability, people, it's always um, easier to determine first the total number of possible outcomes. Right? So because this is just pretty much word arrangement, we just need to count how many letters there are. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you are going to rearrange the letters using all the letters, this is simply P7 taken seven or simply just seven factorial. Okay? Because we have seven characters that we need to arrange, and we need to arrange all of them. All right, wait, let me let me write it first as all right. Okay. The problem with this one is that notice there are actually four A's in this word. Which means that if you just interchange the two A's with each other, then you actually cannot see a distinct permutation. You don't see a distinct rearrangement of the word. So we actually need to remove those particular arrangements wherein only the A's are arranged within themselves. Right? So how many A's do we have here? We have one, two, three, four. There are actually four A's here. So we need to divide this one by the number of ways we can arrange four A's out of four A's. All right. So um, P of seven taken seven divided by P four taken four, which is simply seven factorial divided by four factorial. So if we solve this, remember the principles of factorials. So 7 factorial can be expanded to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. Then you have divided by 4 factorial here. This cancels out. So we simply need to multiply 7 times 6 times 5, which is 210. Right? So there are 10, uh, I mean 210 different ways you can arrange all the letters in the word Alabama to make distinct rearrangements. All right, so now that we have that, now that we understand how many ways we can actually rearrange this, we need to figure out the number of ways uh, we can actually arrange these letters so that all the A's are together. So how are we going to actually arrange them, right? Note that whenever you are going to arrange objects so that they are together, it is an easier technique to actually group them together, okay? So since all the A's, 
will be arranged next to each other, then we'll just make them one big group. Right? So this is the first object that we have. Okay? So after that group of A's, what other things do we actually need to arrange? Right? So after the four A's, we actually have an L here. Right? We have a B. And finally, we have an M. Right? Okay. So with these objects, how many ways can we arrange them? So how many objects do we have? We have one, two, three, four objects. So we actually have four objects to arrange. All right? So the probability of arranging those objects within each other is simply P4 taken 4. Right? Which is, of course, 4 factorial. But the problem is, within this big arrangement, it is possible for actually the letters to interchange within themselves. Okay? So, if these letters were different, then it would actually affect the way we're going to count. Right? These are 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, four, the, uh, 4 A's. So therefore, the 4 factorial, which is to arrange these 4 objects here, should be multiplied by 4 factorial. Right? Because this 4 factorial refers to how many ways the A's in one object can arrange themselves. However, because they are all A's, rearranging them within themselves actually does not work. Right? Because if you interchange the first and second A, would you be able to still recognize that it's a distinct arrangement as opposed to it was not rearranged? Right? You would not. Okay? So therefore, this 4 factorial here cancels this 4 factorial here. So we are simply left to compute for 4 factorial. 4 factorial is simply 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is simply 24. Right? So therefore, the probability of A happening, right, wherein all the letter A's are clustered together, would simply be the number of ways that they happen, which is 24 ways, divided by the total number of ways that this can be arranged without any restrictions. In this case, that is simply 210. All right. So we just um, simplify this. I think the common uh, divisor, the greatest common divisor is 6. So if we divide 24 by 6, we get 4. If we divide 210 by 6, we get 35. All right, and here is our probability. So the probability of rearranging the words, uh, the letters in the word Alabama, so that all the A's are together, is four out of thirty-five. All right, so let's actually see whether that's um, correct. Let's go back to our um, lesson proper. Aha, here we go. All right, so it is indeed 4 out of 35, 0.11 or pretty much 11.4%. Maybe I should have kept it as 11%. But regardless, that is the probability, right, of rearranging Alabama so that all the A's will be next to each other. Okay, so that wasn't too bad, right? Let's try to see what the next example is. All right. In a 649 lottery, a person wins a prize if they can guess at least three out of the six numbers that come out in no particular order. The choices for the six numbers are from 1 to 49 and no number can be repeated. Determine the probability of winning a prize, any prize. All right. Okay, so for this one, again, Another good example of uh, 
counting. All right, so we're going to actually figure out the number of ways that a person can win with a lottery ticket for a 6 for 49 lottery. Okay, um, knowing that the numbers has to be, uh, it has uh, it has to be, um, for a person to win, they have to get three out of the six numbers correct. Right, and the numbers range from one to 49. No repetition of numbers. Right, and no particular order of how they, these numbers get picked. Right? So if you would like to uh, try this out on your own, of course, you may pause the video first. Try it out. And then later when you're ready, you can unpause the video and check your answer, whether it actually matches with the um, correct answer provided here. All right? Okay, I think that's um, enough time uh, for you to have paused the video, made a decent attempt, and then unpause the video to actually watch over the solution. Okay, now, uh, first, as I mentioned, it's always easier to figure out the number of total possible results first. So again, we go to our trusty whiteboard. Right? Okay. So take note for a person to win, they need to have they need to be able to choose three out of the six uh, numbers correctly that did come out. Right? So the first thing we need to figure out is how many ways. All right, how many ways can they actually uh, or how many possible combinations is possible. Now take note, we are to use combinations because um, uh, take note that order is not specific, order is not important. It doesn't matter whether the first number was picked and whether you picked it last, as long as you get all six numbers correct for you to win the grand prize. Right? So it doesn't matter which number you pick first as long as it matches some of the numbers that do come out. Okay, so to be able to figure out the number of possible combinations of selecting six numbers out of the 49 possible numbers, we simply have to compute for C, 49 taken six, right? Okay. So we're going to leave it like this because this one is a pretty big number. If it was a small number, I'd definitely compute it myself, right? But this one is a very big number, 49 taken six, right? So it's 49 taken six because you need to choose six numbers out of the 49 possible numbers. Order is not important. That's why we are using combinations. So this now refer to the total number of combinations, six number combinations that you can get from choosing six numbers out of 49. Okay, now what about the probability of winning? What about the number of ways of winning, right? So a person is going to win, right? If he gets at least three numbers, right? Okay, right? So therefore, okay, we need to count how many ways, all right, does a person actually get three numbers, right? Four numbers, right? Five numbers, right? And ultimately, the correct six number combination, all right? So since there is, uh, the winning combination is also made up of six numbers, then for the person to be able to win a prize, the person, all right? So the first part, the person has to be able to select three out of those six winning numbers. Okay, so this would be the minimum price. When he chooses three numbers out of the six winning numbers. All right. Then the person, the person can also win if he can choose four out of the six possible uh, winning numbers, right? They can also win. 
they're able to choose five out of the six. And definitely, they win if they are able to figure out all six of them. Right? So again, we're going to use combinations. As it does not matter how he chose those six numbers. It doesn't matter whether the first number drawn was actually the last number that he actually picked. As long as the six numbers that he has or uh, the six numbers that he chose, right, would actually appear, right, as the six winning numbers. All right. Now, take note, in lottery, it's not possible for a person to actually win multiple prizes. For example, if the person is able to guess all the six numbers correctly, then that person could not win up the prize for guessing five of the correct numbers. Although, technically, he did guess five of the correct numbers, right? Because he was able to figure out all six. But in the case of lottery, they actually exclude that. If you're able to get six correct, um, if you're able to get all six correct numbers, then you only win for this particular prize, right? You don't win for this one, nor you don't win for that, nor you don't win for this. Thus, the number of ways for a person to win is actually exclusive. If the person wins the grand prize, he cannot win the prize for guessing five of the correct numbers. And he also cannot get the price that the person gets for guessing four of the correct six numbers. Also, none for three of getting, uh, not, none for getting three out of the six correct answers. I mean, numbers in combination. All right. Okay. So therefore, this would be the total number of ways that a person can win. So this is when he gets three, right? This is when he gets it four, right? This is when he gets it five, right? And this is ultimately when he gets all of the numbers, right? All right? So therefore, now that we have the total number of ways that the person can actually win, and we have the total number of ways that any possible outcome can occur. Therefore, the probability of this one happening or the probability a person wins is simply the ratio of this sum divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So this is C, 6 taken 3 plus C, right, plus C, plus C divided by C49 taken 6, right? So for this particular lesson, right, you, are, you will be allowed to actually leave your answers in terms of factorial symbols, P symbols, or combination symbols. I am actually more interested in the logic behind the choice rather than the actual numbers. All right? So that's the probability is simply this particular expression. Let's see how it does with the answer provided for this particular problem. Okay, let's go back. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is the, uh, the number of ways that you can actually get any six number result. Ooh, that's 13,983,816 possible results. Now for the person to win. All right. So this is this sum. Okay. Which of course breaks down to 20 for, um, so there are 20 ways for you to win getting three of the numbers correctly, 15 ways to win, getting four numbers correctly, six ways to win if you get all five, if you get five of them correctly, and then there's only one way to win to get all six correct, which of course is logical. So there are only 42 ways to win the prize. So that's, that's a very, very small probability, right? 
I mean, there are 13,983,816 possible results. And out of those possible results, only 42 actually guarantees a winning ticket. Right? At least the smallest possible price. Right? Thus, the probability is 1 out of 332,948. Thus, on the average, Right? Out of 332,948 combinations, one of them would be a winning ticket. So if you actually um, ask 13,983,816 people to actually bet on the lottery, each of them choosing a different combination as opposed to the other, right? one of them, one out of 332,948 will win because only 42 winners will emerge. Right? Such a low probability. Right? So uh, uh, do consider this when you are actually trying to uh, bet on the lottery so that you actually consider your chances whether it's really possible for you to win or no. Right? I think uh, the last example uh, is about cards. Right? Because as I mentioned, um, a few weeks before, um, counting and statistics is uh, pretty much studied um, intensively in gambling, right? Because um, gambling is such a money-making game, right? So the next example um, is again about poker, right? So in this example, we're supposed to figure out the probability of drawing a full house. Okay, so um, note uh, based from the last examples that we had, um, I noticed that a lot of you guys were actually able to get the um, the main part of uh, what's this of the poker game. However, take note that poker is always a five card game, right? So if I ask you to like figure out how many ways can you get two pairs, right? Once you figure out the possibilities or the ways to get two pairs, you also need to figure out the number of ways you're going to draw the last card. So it's always a five card game, right? So if you only consider three cards, then you also need to consider the last two cards. All right, so in this particular problem, we're supposed to determine the probability of drawing a full house. So a full house is a five-card combination that has a three of a kind, which means three characters, uh, three cards of the same character but different suits. And it also has a pair for its last two cards. Okay? All right? So if you would like to try this out on your own, you may do so. Uh, take note. Um, in... Poker, uh, a standard deck has 52 cards. Out of the 52 cards, uh, there's 13 different characters. And each character has four different suits. Right? So if you would like to try and determine what's the probability of drawing a full house, you may pause the video, make a decent attempt, and then once you're ready, you may unpause the video and check whether your answer is correct or no. Right, I think that should be um, enough time for you to have paused the video, made a decent attempt, and then unpause it to actually view your answer. Okay, so we're going to um, switch again to our uh, whiteboard. Okay, and then see what the probability is of computing a full house. So the first thing we're going to compute is of course how many possible poker hands are there, okay? So in poker, you're supposed to pick, you're supposed to pick five cards out of the 52 possible cards. Uh, in poker, arrangement is also not important. It does not matter which cards you draw first, as long as, in the end, you have this particular combination. So if you need to draw five cards out of 52, no 
arrangement is important. And that is simply 52 taken 5. So this is how many ways you can choose 5 cards out of 52 possible cards. That would be the total number of poker hands we actually have. All right. Now, we're going to focus on the full house. Okay. So as mentioned earlier, to get a full house, you need a tree of a kind. Right? And you also need a pair. All right? Okay? So take note, since you actually need the three of a kind and the pair to happen together, you need to actually multiply the number of ways that each particular sub-event will occur. Okay? So let's now try to determine how many ways can we actually draw a three of a kind? Assuming it's the thing we're going to draw first. And then afterwards, how many ways can we draw a pair? All right. So for a three of a kind, for us to draw that, we first need to choose what character would we have three of a kind. So as I mentioned earlier, there are 13 different characters in a deck of cards. So from those 13, we're going to choose one. Okay, so one character out of 13 possible characters. It's not important which one we draw. All right? But now after we draw them, after we figure out, okay, so we're going to go with the king. So we've already chosen what character we're going to make three of a kind of. After we figured out what character, we need to draw three of those out of the four possible suits. Right? So it does not matter which suit gets drawn first, as long as the end of the day, you actually draw three um, cards, which are the same characters, right, out of different suits. So this particular expression here definitely computes the number of ways you can get three of a kind. Right? Now, what about a pair? Right? So for a pair, people, Right, so we need to choose another character first. Right, but take note because we've already chosen one character for the three of a kind, we cannot choose one character out of 13 for the pair. Right, because for one, it might turn out to be the same character as we chose for our three of a kind. So, therefore, for a pair, we are going to choose one card out of the 12 remaining characters. Right. We don't choose 1 out of 13, but rather 1 out of 12. Because if we still go with 1 out of 13, then, it'd be, uh, then, it's, then we're saying it's possible to draw the same character we have for a tree of a kind, which becomes impossible in several ways. For one, it does not become a full house anymore because it's a four of a kind instead of a tree of a kind. Second, if you draw already three, if you drew already three from the previous combination, then it's impossible to draw two more of the same character because that means there would be five cards of the same character present. So we are not going to have that. That's to guarantee that the pair would have a different character as opposed to the three of a kind. We can only choose one out of the remaining 12. Right? Once you've chosen one character out of the remaining 12. We need to choose two suits out of four possible suits. So this particular count definitely gives us the number of ways to get a pair, all right? And to get a full house, we need this total combination, right? Okay, so since this is the number of desired possible outcomes, this is the number of possible outcomes. Thus, the probability of getting a full house is simply the ratio of 
the number of ways you get a full house divided by the total number of ways you can draw any five cards out of 52, right? So this would be the probability of drawing a full house. So let's uh, check our answers. See if it does come out correct. All right, so notice uh, uh, 52 taken 5. It's about 2,598,960 ways. It's a lot of possible five-card combinations. All right, to get a three of a kind, there's 52 ways of doing that. To get the remaining pair, all right, take note that there's only 12 characters left to choose from to get the pair. There's 72 ways. Thus, to get a full house, there are only 3,744 ways. And the probability of getting a full house or drawing a full house is 3,744 divided by 2,598,960. This one simplifies as 6 out of 4,165 or about 0.1%. So notice how small that is. Right? It's even smaller than 100%. Right? One-tenth of 1%. One All right. Okay. So um, I hope that... Um, you're able to actually um, understand our lesson for the week, uh, combining uh, probability and uh, complex counting procedures. Right? If um, there are some things that um, you did not understand, of course, you know that you can always ask a question on the uh, weekly Google Docs. All right? So um, that's all for this week. I hope you guys stay safe. This is Mr. Trusino saying bye.